Hello guys, uh, this is going to be the first episode in a end amount series, I don't know how long I'll do this, I don't know if anyone will watch it, I don't know if anyone cares, but I'm going to be doing a series here on learning to program with SourcePond. Um, if you don't know what that is, you're probably in the wrong place. Uh, SourcePond is a scripting language for the Source Engine um, made by the Allied Modders team. And basically, they they created this language, um, not completely. Uh, it's original. It was originally called Pawn, made by CompuPhase, and uh, with a lot of modifications in it to make it cleaner and stuff like that. And it was adapted for use in the Source Engine, which is run by SourceMod. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up our environment, we're going to compile our first plugin, and we're going to get started. Hopefully it's not too bad. I'm not scripted. Uh, I ramble and whatever, but I'm making this video as, a, uh, as an introduction. Some of the older videos online are just that. They're old. And I would like to, uh, I would like to kind of contribute to some of the newer source pond things with the new syntax. So we're not going to be teaching you old things. We're going to teach you all the new things, and uh, hopefully get you coding pretty good. Um, so we're just going to be setting up our environment. I don't personally do what I'm showing you, but it's the easiest way to get started. So that's just the way I'm going to teach you. Um, if you guys don't know already, uh, forums.allymods.net is the source mod forum. Uh, if you hide the AMX part. Um, and there is some really cool things in here. So SP Edit is a program that basically, it's called an IDE, um, which is like an integrated development environment, something like that. Um, it's been a while since I've looked at that definition. but um, So basically what it's going to do, it's going to have all the tools you need to get started. Um, Personally, I don't really like it very much, but it's really great. Uh, a lot of people use it. Um, and yeah, it's pretty simple to use. So uh, we're going to go ahead and download it. So we'll go ahead and download the standalone. I don't personally want to install it on my system because I'm not going to use it very much. So I'm just going to grab the zip file. All right. And it <laughs> deleted itself because I didn't hit save. <laughs> like I said, unscripted. So. Okay, so standalone. We'll save it this time. Awesome. So here it is. It's in our. It's in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that over here. Awesome. So now it's on my desktop. We're gonna extract it so I can use it. I'm gonna delete the original zip file. Don't need that anymore. And here we go. We have an executable. Um, I'm not sure how this works out of the box. I guess we'll find out. I have, I'm honestly not sure. But yeah, so you're going to go ahead and download it, select your language, and uh, here it is. So basically, we're going to go ahead and create new. So we're going to create a new script, right? Start as the script. And we're going to go ahead and name it my first plugin. Awesome. There we go. So we're going to go name it my first plugin. That's all right. Save. And here we go. So right off the bat, this is a lot to look at. Um, and I understand that. But there's going to be some things throughout this series that I'm going to have to tell you to ignore. Um, it may not make sense to you. It may not be... Uh, <clears throat> it may not make sense to you. It may seem a little daunting, but... The less you worry about what you don't know, the more you can focus on learning the things. Uh, so, of course, eventually you're going to know what all this is, but if I were to just dump it on you all at once, it'd, it'd be harder to pick up. So, we're going to ignore everything that's here, okay? Except maybe the um, plug in my info, because this is kind of important. You don't need to know how it works yet, um, but you need to know what it does. Basically, um, these are little fields, right, where you can put, uh, like, your name, like, the name of the plugin, the author, right, and uh, the version. So this is using a preprocessor directive. You don't need to know what that means. Um, we're just going to delete these because we don't need them. It's too complicated for us right now. 
So we're just going to put little quotes here instead and delete those. So you're, you should look like this now. Um, and then we should also move pragma semicolon 1 down because that's not right. It shouldn't be above. The first thing at the top of your file should always be your includes. Um, that's just a good tip. Uh, and then you can have uh, your pragmas, which is basically tells the compiler uh, tells the compiler how to act. Essentially, it it give like adjusts its behavior. Um, so you don't need to necessarily know what those are right now. And then uh, finally, you have plug in my info. Basically, what this is, it tells source mod what like some of the information about this plugin. So we'll go ahead and name it my first plugin, right? and the author is going to be you. And uh, we're going to just make it print to chat. We're just going to make it print something so we can just see anything happen. Uh, so we're going to say prints to server hello world. And notice I used the single quotes there. And there's a reason for that. Um, we'll dive into that later for sure. Uh, version 1.0. Um, I might have done that. Cool. So um, this can be your URL. It doesn't matter. Um, and yeah, like I said, don't worry about the single quote. Just use it and trust me. Um, yeah. So we're gonna, gonna dive into this. So basically, what this is when you whenever you see open brackets, it means that it's a function. Okay. It's it, it either means that you're calling a function or that a function will be called. Um, and there's two different names for this. So a function that's called into the source, for example, whenever the plugin starts, this function right here is going to get called. Um, so on plugin start, obviously, it makes sense that it's called when the plugin starts. So this is what you do things when you, this is where you want to do things right off the bat. Um, right when the plugin loads. Um, there's a lot of things you're supposed to put in here. There's a lot of things you're not supposed to put in here. Uh, but it's a good starting place to, to just do anything because this is the start. This is the beginning. Um, so basically what we're going to do... Uh, oh, I'm going to go back, actually. So on plugin start, right, that's what we call a forward. Right? I'm going to mark this, forward. A forward calls into our code, so on plug and start, it's calling in and it's executing whatever we want to happen, right? So we want to print to server, right? And we use, and we're going to print a string, and that's what the double quotes mean, string. And we're going to put something in here, so we're going to say hello world. Awesome. So, um, so if on plug and start Call, is called into our code. When we use a function like this and, and we use it, it's called a native. So this is called a native. Generally, forwards call into your code, print to server, a native calls out. So yeah, that's basically, um, that's basically the difference between a forward and a native. Um, it's not super important that you grasp it 100% right now. Um, the only thing you're expected to know right now is what exactly this is doing. And it's pretty self-explanatory if you think about it. You're printing to server, right? Open bracket means it's a function, right? And you're printing the string. Quotes mean string. And then you are ending the function call. There's nothing more you need to add. And then the semicolon. Um, the semicolon is important. Um, pragma semicolon 1 basically tells the compiler, hey, force there to be semicolons. Um, and that's really a good thing. It's pretty standard for uh, programming. It's good to get in the habit of doing that. So I definitely recommend using pragma semicolon 1. Uh, so here you go. So you have your print to server. That's great. So now if we go ahead and go to build and compile all, we'll go ahead and compile that. And if you notice, if you go into your source spawn, if you go into scripts, You'll see my first plugin.sp. That's your source file, right? That's what this is. And then if you go into my first plugin.smx, that's the binary. So if I try to open this in text, you see garbage. It's a, it's a binary file. We expect that. 
And yeah, so this is what you'd move on to your server. And if you were to load it in via console uh, with SM plugins load and then, you know, my first plugin, it'll it'll show you hello world. That's cool. This is your first plugin you've ever made. Nice. Um, so this is just an example of setting up your environment. Obviously, this doesn't do anything useful. We won't get into doing really cool stuff until a little bit later, so follow my series. Um, yeah, so uh, if you like this, subscribe. I'm going to have a lot more coming out. The more people that like this, the more reason I'll have to do another one. So yeah, thanks, guys. Um, I'll see you on the next one.